So you're here for survival tips, huh? To improve your odds in the struggle against the mindless hordes who keep spreading their disease, always hunting for your brain until there's nothing left. No, I don't mean TikTokers. Zombies trying to destroy your very lives. No, I don't mean politicians either. Actual undead, okay? If you're not in the spooky mood yet, how about taking a closer look at the true horror? The real world. <laughs> this video sponsor, Ground News, can help you get a clearer look at the real world. As you probably know, I generally keep this channel free of politics. The main reason being, they're just so damn polarized. Personally, I like my news with as much context and transparency and as little clickbait as possible. Ground News compares how news are being covered from one end of the political spectrum to the other, and also which news are being underreported by each. You can browse the world or local news, so I can keep up with all the stabbings in downtown Halifax and the shootouts in Dartmouth. Juicy. It also shows you direct comparisons of how different outlets phrase the headline depending on their particular bias. Who knows, you might catch yourself bathing in a particular echo chamber. So if you're tired of the pandering drifter BS, go to ground.news forward slash scalagram or click the link in the description below. What's the best weapon against hordes of the flesh-munching undead? Everybody has their own opinion. One of them, of course, is the almighty spear. Sounds great, right? Just like a bunch of other selections that I'm going to disagree with. It seems like this would be the way to go. You keep the stinkers at bay, make sure you're outside of the bite range, and you dispatch them one by one until your damn spear gets stuck in one of their heads. And then the others come after you, you're kind of screwed or munched or crunched or have your brain slurped out. You know how it goes. Also, there are some other considerations other than sheer damage. Durability, for example. The spear is not fantastic in that regard, unless it's made of all metal, in which case it's heavier and the balance is worse. Pole arms are great, one of the best weapons of history. So naturally you would think that's the way to go against zombies. And yes, of course, you would have plenty of advantages, reach, power, etc. You know, something like this, a war scythe, seems like a great idea. Again, you have lots of reach, you can split their heads, or you could use a point to easily penetrate the skull and do plenty of damage to the brain. Dispatch them that way, you can also strike with the metal reinforced butt end. It's all good. And against Human attackers, if you have the space, great. Doesn't get much better. But in real life, we don't have magic inventories and we can't just move this thing on our back and then have it magically hover there or otherwise attach to our back and not be in the way. This is a bit of a hassle to carry around, especially if you have to suddenly escape, run away, climb over fences or who knows what, this could be a problem. You may simply not be able to keep that with you. At some point you may have to discard that because of some sort of emergency situation. And uh, again, in confined spaces, you may not be able to bring this with you if you have to crawl through a tunnel or who knows what. There are so many situations. And even if not, even if you're really lucky and don't run into any of those situations, just walking around with this for who knows how long, you know, keep being on the move. If you have a vehicle, yeah, sure. But depending on the vehicle, this might not even fit in there. The other obvious choice, which is extremely popular in zombie scenarios, a katana, or in this case, a katana longsword hybrid, which is double-edged. There is a lot of positive to be said about it. And this will come as a shock to some people who think I'm oh so terribly biased. I think a katana is actually better for a zombie apocalypse than a longsword. Yeah, I'll give you a, a moment of time to recover from the shock. A longsword is great as a dueling weapon. And in case of a war sword, also useful on the battlefield. But it's not quite as convenient to carry around as a katana. It's just larger overall, a katana has a... a smaller profile, you know, the Tsuba doesn't stick out quite as much as the crossguard, and overall it's shorter. And 
you generally have with single edged blades, you usually have more stiffness for the same cutting power. The most powerful cutters, as far as long swords are concerned, often have a relatively thin blade. Not always, but unless you want to make it heavy, the tendency is generally toward a relatively thin blade. If you mess up a cut, if you mess up the edge alignment during a cut, meaning that rather than following the direction of a cut, being in line with the angle, it's a little bit off, then this can get sort of stuck in the target and flex violently. And uh, that is much more likely to happen the more exhausted you get. And of course, in a zombie apocalypse, you are quite likely to end up pretty damn exhausted because of lack of food, lack of sleep, or poor quality sleep, and simply having to destroy a whole lot of zombies. And that is very noticeable. Like when you're fresh, everything is, everything comes easy and, and you cut very well, but the more and more tired you get, the more your form suffers until eventually you're just gonna be like, Ugh, and you're just gonna mess it up a lot, which can cause plenty of damage to the blade. And a thin blade runs a higher risk of breaking. Of course, it also depends a lot on the type of steel and the heat treatment, etc., etc. But in general, on average, I would argue that a single edge blade can be more durable and more forgiving if you screw it up. However, as awesome as the sword is, as much as I like it, would I want to carry this on me during an apocalypse, along with a bunch of other crap, you know, survival gear and, and rations and, you know, med kits and <laughs> all the other supplies, clothing and tent and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, no, I would prefer something a little bit more low profile. That's where short blades come in handy. And of course, the uh, tactical couch potato mall ninja market is saturated with zombie blades. There's really nothing wrong with a machete or similar blade, you know, something that's compact and importantly, that serves more than one function. With this, you can clear underbrush, you can cut kindling or maybe firewood, depending on the type. Uh, you can use it as a utility knife, oversized, but either way, there are a number of things you can do, which is great. And they are also built pretty tough in general. A lot of them are overbuilt, have particularly thick blades, all of this. So that's all great. The only problem with that is, well, it's not a lot of reach, of course, and there is no guarantee that if you hack into a zombie's skull, it'll just stop them immediately. And if you're unlucky, it might get stuck inside the head, which is, by the way, is also a concern with a thin blade in particular. If you cut into a zombie head, and again, the edge alignment is a little bit off, or it's just too much to cut all the way through, and you might get stuck. If it flexes, you're more likely to end up in a kind of a weird angle. And then it's harder to extract the blade because ideally you would go out the same way you came in, right? If it twisted on the way, you might not be able to. And uh, even with a thrust, you may not be able to extract it as easily. Depends on the zombies. If they're particularly rotten, then yeah, this may not be super difficult. But if it's the fresher type or the you know, rage zombie type or whatever, then you might have a problem. This is still the most devastating melee weapon I've ever tested. It's an upscaled version of the Igorot headhunting axe. And um, this seems like the perfect choice because it's incredibly easy to destroy a zombie head with these. You know, the analogs that I've tried, it's basically like a 20% power swing, no problem, gets right in there, destroys it completely. And uh, you have even two sides available. Uh, this is not going to be as useful against zombies uh, because you probably want to do damage over a greater area because this is something that is especially glossed over or forgotten in The Walking Dead where any kind of damage to the brain apparently just takes them out and their skulls are also super squishy. Um, if you think about, I mean, 
zombies are either magic or a different kind of magic. You know, the, the way the viruses work, it's obviously it's fictional. It doesn't directly relate to real life, with the exception of the, the fungus type that actually sort of exists. Either way, arguably, a lot of the brain a zombie doesn't have a use for. Like the free prefrontal cortex, you know, higher cognitive functions, higher what? They don't need that. How likely is this to get stuck? I'm not really sure. It didn't get stuck in the zombie head analog that I've tested, but uh, how realistic that is, that's another question. A real bone may be a little bit stickier, so to speak. So could this be a problem? Yeah, maybe. If it's not, then yeah, sure, this is a pretty good choice. In fact, it's a great choice because you have a good amount of reach. It doesn't take all that much energy to swing it around, which is important because you need to be able to keep going. And it has multiple functions. You know, this could be used against armored humans if need be, or for breaching doors or a bunch of other applications. Uh, the other side also has a bunch of uses, not as good for chopping wood and, and making firewood and all that, but um, you could also have a different ax shape, of course. This one is more devastating because of this shape here. It concentrates a lot of the force at the end. So that's all good. This is not all that convenient to carry. It's the usual problem. Uh, this is just, uh, yeah, you can kind of use it as an improvised walking stick if you have a sheath for it, or uh, otherwise you're just going to have to carry it on, on your back or attach it to your backpack or something like that. It's all not amazing. If you have a smaller axe or a hatchet, rather, you can attach it to the belt and it's going to be a little bit more convenient, but it has less reach and less power, so there's always going to be some kind of compromise. And finally, everybody's favorite, blunts. No bad pothead out blunt impact weapons which have the significant advantage that you're not going to get stuck on anything really for the most part uh, this right here by the way is a golden dog that i got as a gift from an awesome channel called playing with weapons it's going to be linked down below check it out weapon builds and such so this would certainly do the job you can swing it with two hands. You can deliver powerful swings, but it's probably not gonna take all of that much effort to crack a skull and do significant damage to the brain of a zombie. And uh, this one even allows you to thrust as well. You know, again, it's got pros and cons, but any kind of blunt weapon is useful. War hammers, maces, in particular maces, I find quite useful because they're omnidirectional, so to speak. With a Warhammer, the alignment does matter. If you don't line it up quite well, it might glance off and not hit as effectively. Something like this is the same all the way around, so it doesn't matter. Meaning that under stress, when the adrenaline is pumping, you don't need perfect technique. You can just go, you know, you're gonna be fine. Depending on the type of blunt weapon, it's also pretty much indestructible. If you think about an all steel flanged mace, I've done some abusive tests with one that's, you know, budget range. It's not even the best quality you can possibly have. And I did end up bending it and denting one area of it. It still worked. You know, something like that might get uglier over time, but so does the entire world during a zombie apocalypse. So who cares, right? And another big advantage over blades, including axes, no maintenance. You don't have to worry about edge damage. You don't have to worry about resharpening the sucker. You just keep clobbering. A blunt weapon overall, you might say, is a no-brainer. You could try to tweak the design to reach a good balance between uh, carryability, is that a word? It is now, and power. You could have a big two-handed version that gives you reach and power, or you could have a smaller, lighter, single-handed version that you can just have on your belt that doesn't do as much damage, but is less exhausting to swing and much more convenient to carry. And then as a sidearm, this would be great. You know, I've already talked about this as pretty much the perfect self-defense sword, because again, it's very convenient to carry. It's a tremendously powerful cutter. It has 
tool application as well, and uh, it is good in confined spaces, which is what you want from a sidearm. So if you cannot use your big two-handed blunt weapon, then you've got this as a backup. Again, it's got the usual drawbacks of you don't want to get this stuck. It's more than enough to chop off a zombie head or arm or leg here and there. And um, yeah, also of course useful against raiders and whatnot. So personally, I think that's what I would go with. Some sort of blunt main weapon, either blunt or some kind of axe with tool use as well. A pole axe would be really tempting because you've got a spike, you've got an axe, you've got a hammer. That's plenty of versatility, but again, that's gonna be a bit of a problem to carry around. So yeah, mace and this perhaps, or alternatively a dagger, uh, or a large survival knife of some kind that's good enough for thrust. So the idea is if a zombie grabs you in confined spaces, like jumped you maybe, you can draw this and just jam it right in its head and hopefully that does a trick. A shield would be a fantastic weapon in that situation, especially when you think of something like a riot shield, which is transparent, so you don't even block your view when using it. That would of course come in very handy against hordes of the undead. Again, it's a bit cumbersome, it's a lot to carry. So it just depends on the situation. If you have a vehicle, a reliable vehicle, what is gonna be reliable during an apocalypse, right? Uh, but uh, if you have a vehicle that you mostly get around in and uh, you don't stray too far from it, then you could keep a bunch more weapons there, of course. But as far as carrying things on your person, I would think this is a decent choice. Let me know what you think. What opinions do you have? What are your favorites? All of that down below, typey typey. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.